So welcome to my Facebook Live. Today is Thursday and in the United States it is Thanksgiving Day and just a reminder to all of us to be so grateful for our presence here in this world, in this life and to celebrate, to celebrate our lives. Today I'm going to talk about the self center and this is like our internal GPS or our sat nav system, the place that gives us our bearings in the world. It's our source of inner guidance if you will. The self center also called the G center as in the letter G because it relates directly to our connection into perfect geometry and this perfect geometry the simplest way of describing it is to look at one of those nautilus shells that, you know that run in this perfect expanding spiral that all of us to say is we're connected into perfect geometry in this lifetime and if this happens from our self center so for the benefit of this call, please have a copy of your life chart with you while I'm going through this talk today, as it will help you follow along personally with what it is that goes on in your human design. If you don't have a copy of your chart handy, then you can go to our website and download a free copy from our website of your report, your human design report, and within that report there will be a life chart, and you can have a look at that and see exactly what it is that's going on in your design. Our website is humandesignforusall.com humandesignforusall.com and from that website you can also download a free copy of the human design software and uh, you can put it on your computer and drop as many charts as you like with that software. Also, you can get a free copy of our human design app and this is for your uh, smartphone. Uh, go to the human design app on your smartphone thehumandesignapp.com and you'll be guided to download the app to either the iOS, the Apple iPhone system, iPads or iPods or to Android phones and tablets and you'll be able to draw up charts wherever you are. This app also has multiple features on it for further exploration of human design. So, with chart in hand, let's make a start. The self center is the diamond shaped center beneath the throat center. It is the fourth center from the top of the chart. To date, we've had a look at the crown center, our source of mental inspiration, the mind center, where we cogitate and give context to our inspirations, and the throat center, where we get to express our thoughts and actions in multiple ways. We've come to appreciate that there are three ways in which centers operate. They're either defined, that means they're colored in and connected through a colored in and or defined channel or channels, to one or more centers, which means that these centers, the ones that are colored in, are turned on, running and available 24-7. Also, they are fixed, and they are fixed to operate in a particular way according to the channel or channels that define into them. Okay? There are centers that are undefined, these centers are colored white, and which have at least one gate activated in them. And there are also what we call open centers, these centers are also colored white, and they have no gates activated in them at all. They're wide open. White centers have a characteristic to reflect. That is, to reflect other people with those centers defined in their life charts back to them. So if a center is undefined, then whatever gate or gates are activated in it reflect the nature of that center with the added quality of that or those gates that are activated in them. If a center is open, then it gives a pure reflection back to another person of whatever is active in their defined center. Undefined and open centers can be very wise when used in alignment with a person's overall design. However, they can also be centers in which one picks up on conditioning according to others' defined centers. And this is because an undefined center that absorbs somebody else's particular and fixed ways of acting rather than reflecting it is actually out of alignment with their own more flexible nature. The self center is where we find our place in the world. So very important to understand defined self center, undefined self center, or open self center. The self center connects us into the matrix of life and the seasons of nature. There are eight gates in the self center, four of which give direction in very particular ways, like points on a compass, north, south, east, and west. And there are four what we call love gates, which embrace our presence here through a profound connection and appreciation for our environment and how we move within it. From the self-center, 
there are four leadership channels which we touched on when we were looking at the throat center in the last Facebook Live. The leadership comes from gate 13, fellowship with mankind, also known as the listener, who can appreciate things vibrationally on a very great depth. And through listening, this gate matches input with direction that is usually but not always in accordance with prior experience. Gate 13 can also have the impulse to reach beyond what has previously been tried because it is always looking to expand through experience. Leadership also happens through gate 1, that is in the top side of the self-center in the middle, the gateway of creativity that is constantly pressing for innovative and often empowering outcomes. Gate number 7, uniformity, on the left, top left-hand side of the self-center, provides leadership in pointing out potential future benefits for all concerned, if everybody will combine their intention towards this future goal. It can be considered logical, and one makes logical steps towards a future goal. These three gates, the 13, the 1, and the, 13, uh, the 7, 13, 1, and 7, and their leadership styles are all directional. Right? The fourth gate that can provide leadership is gate number 10, and that's on the side of the self-center. And this is one of the love gates. It's called behaviors, offering us the eternal question, are we in love with our life? Are we having a good time yet? And when we are challenged, do we relate to those challenges from a place of confidence and appreciation for our life experience or not? If yes, then we evolve. If no, then we wait for another challenge to see if our behavior is going to change. Gate 10 also has the potential to connect to the spleen center in the lower left side of the chart through the channel of survival, the channel of 10 to the 57. And this channel matches our behaviors at gate 10 with our intuition at gate 57. If challenges are recognized for what they are and met with confidence and the intuition is trusted, then this channel provides a presence and a guidance through life that is individual and different. Gate 10 also can connect to the sacral center through the channel of exploration, the 10 to the 34, and the clear instruction to follow your own convictions. Whose convictions are we talking about? Whoever's got this channel. Since the sacral center is involved here, a simple gut response is immediately indicating anything of personal conviction. In the lower side of the self center, gate number 15, humanity, is one of the four love gates. And it connects us into seeing and appreciating that all life and all the people and living things in it are one. When connected to the sacral center through the channel of rhythm, the channel 515, a gut response gives instant attunement to the flow of life and the timings of nature and the natural. Gate number two in the middle at the lower side of the self-center is the fourth directional gate called receptivity and connects us into our higher self and the dimension from where we can receive higher guidance that does not necessarily relate to logical or experiential directives. Again, the potential connection to the sacral center here gives us instant attunement with a gut response to the gifts of what we call the alchemist. The alchemist is one who can transform matter, and here we use the image of someone who changes lead to gold, starts off with something that's just so-so, and brings a, a particular shine to it. Gate 46, in the lower right corner, is the third of the love gates called serendipity, and it allows us to be grateful and appreciative of our bodies, the temples that carry us through our life. When we honor our bodies through nourishment, exercise, and rest. They're ready to confront challenges and carry us through whatever life puts before us. The potential connection to the sacral center here again through the channel 46 to 29 with a gut response indicates whether a particular experience is going to bring us fulfillment or not. The last of the love gates is gateway number 25 called innocence. Whether you have this gate or not in your design, innocence is something we've all known in our life and will probably something we will seek out again or recognize as an essential part of our life journey before we're finished here. Innocence can be described as our trust in universal love. That life is a gift and a blessing, albeit with some intense challenges, 
but an experience we all signed up for. The potential connection from Gate 25 is to the Heart Center, the Willpower Center, through the channel of initiation, the 25 to the 51. I also call this the Shaman Channel, or Shaman Channel, as it describes the ability to walk between the worlds. Not necessarily the easiest thing to do when the material world is so intense. If we have an image of the human design wheel, that is the whole circle with the hexagrams all around it, then you'll notice that this wheel has eight evenly spaced spokes in it, colored yellow. Look closely and you'll notice that each one of these spokes is in the self-center. Four directional gates equally spaced at 90 degrees from each other and four love gates, again, equally spaced from each other at 90 degrees. Each of these gates describes a very particular season of the year. For instance, in the northern hemisphere, gate number 25, one of the love gates, describes the timing of the vernal, the spring equinox, around March the 21st. Gate 15, the summer solstice around June the 21st. Gate 46, the fall equinox, around September the 22nd. And gate number 10, the winter solstice around December the 21st. These are the four love gates. The four directional gates are equally represented and by what we have considered pagan festivals. Gate number 13 is called Imbok, falls around February the 2nd and is in the deep midwinter in the Northern Hemisphere. Gate number 2, Beltane, happens around May the 1st and the celebration of the Maypole dances and also adopted by some to mark revolutionary celebrations. Gate number 7, called Lamas, mark the height of summer around August the 1st. And gate number one, Samhain, fall on the All Saints Eve, also known as Halloween on October the 31st. If your self-center is defined, then you are someone who has a particular identity and a trajectory through your life, according to the channel or channels defining your self-center. There is a recognizable consistency in your identity and how you go about your life. If your self-center is undefined, then you reflect the world back to itself. We can say that you are all things to all people, with little nuances in it according to any gateways that you have activated in that center, certain characteristics. And remember, with an undefined self-center, people will see in you whatever they want to see. You have particular characteristics in expressing aspects of your identity according to these gates or gates that you have activated. But whatever somebody sees in you, that is their pleasure. Right? We say about you, you know, what anyone thinks of you is none of your business. And what everyone makes of you also is none of your business. You know, it's their interpretation. If you're being true to yourself, that is what really matters. So remember, if you have an undefined and an open self-center, if someone likes what they see in you, Remember that they're getting an aspect, a reflection of an aspect of themselves they like about themselves. The opposite is always also true. They don't like what they see, you know, they're getting a reflection of something in themselves they're not so keen about. So there's nothing about uh, trying to bend yourself out of shape, you know, trying to please everybody if you have an undefined or open self-center. Be very watchful about this. So if your self-center is open, then be aware that the world, perhaps the universe, is your oyster. There are no limits to who and to what kinds of identities you get to play with here. But clinging to a specific identity is going to bring about chaos in your life. Because for anyone with undefined or open self-centers, you must pay attention always to your type and authority to know what company to keep, and particularly who respects your space and your needs. Be flexible. Boundaries are always going to be an issue for you if you're not honoring your type and authority. An amazing, wide-open life experience is yours by honoring your flexibility in accordance with your design, all things to all people. Remember, always, that there are no good and no bad designs. The most important one is yours. When you live in accordance with your design, life itself will carry you. Okay? So I hope that's given you some insights into the self-center, this guidance system within us. Define self-center, you have a particular way, a particular guidance that you carry with you. Undefined or open self-centers, 
open to the winds of change. Trust your type and authority and you will always show up and be present and available and guided into the right situations in your life. Next time we're going to have a look at the heart center, the center of willpower, our wishes and wants and see you next time. Okay? A wonderful Thanksgiving. So much to be grateful for. Bye for now.